身的孩子。Editor of the Church News. Welcome to the Church News Podcast. We are taking you on a journey of connection as we discuss news and events of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints. For the first time in its 170 year history, participants living outside the United States joined the 360 voice Tabernacle Choir at Temple Square at the 193rd Annual General Conference of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints. They sang with the choir in the Saturday morning session and both Sunday sessions. The 10 singers from six countries, Brazil, Mexico, Ghana, Malaysia, Philippines, and Taiwan, are part of the Tabernacle Choir pilot program. They join this episode of the Church News Podcast to report on their visit to Salt Lake City and their experiences with the choir. Welcome everyone to the Church News Podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having Thank us. You. Yeah. Great to be here. It is really great to be sitting around a table with such an elite group of singers. I want to start and have each of you just go around and tell us your name and where you're from. My name is Denise. I'm from Mexico. My name is Pei Shan. I'm from Taiwan. I'm Ronald from the Philippines. My name is Sandy from the Philippines. Elisha from Ghana. My name is Jonathan, I'm from Malaysia. And my name is Talita, I'm from Brazil. My name is Georgina, or Georgina, and I'm from Mexico. My name is Alvaro, and I'm from Brazil. My name is Rodrigo, and I am also from Brazil. I want to start because you've now been here for two weeks. You've had an opportunity to perform with the choir. What is that like? Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable. So there's usually one word I use. Unfathomable. <laughs> right. So it's been like a dream come true yes. for all of us, for sure. A dream that we never thought it would be possible. Was it intimidating? Yeah, of course. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> At first it was, but I think our fears have gone away. We got more comfortable with working with Drs. Murphy, Mac, and Rebecca Wilbrook as well. Uh, Dr. Worden as well. I've known the choir from afar to be a choir that has very high standard. Mm -hmm. And so coming in, I wasn't sure I'm going to fit in. You know? Same here. The way they, they do their things. You know, when you watch their video, everything is perfect. From the conducting to the singing to the videography, everything is so perfect. So I, I kept wondering, can I fit in, you know? But when we came, everybody welcomed us with it's open very, arms. Yeah, they're like, you're welcome. Welcoming. What can I do to help? Are you okay? You're singing good. And there's this guy, Steve, in the choir, who always turned back to say, thank you, Elisha, you did great. This song was so nice. <laughs> <laughs> and you had a chance to practice with the choir virtually first. What was that like? Scary on the first place. <laughs> <laughs> because in the beginning they were practicing for like a concert called Elijah. That was crazy because it was so hard and I was like, I can't sing that. I think I'm not going anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, the challenge, the challenge I had with those uh, virtual rehearsals is that it was kind of one-sided. You know, we get to only watch the Just video. Yeah. It's completely the, different when yes. you're there. It's just like... We are getting used to now, We, I hope you're doing well with that, <laughs> but we need to get used to with the sound of the choir. So we need to fit on the sound of the choir and blend with the choir. So I think that was the great <laughs> challenge for us. And I think we're doing great though, right? <laughs> we are I trying our so. best. <laughs> At the first time when I saw the rehearsals on Zoom, I was scared. But when I came here and go to the rehearsal for the choir. They are so kind with us. They are like so happy that we are here. 
So I feel so comfortable, I feel so grateful, I feel so humble to receive all the kindness of all of you. So it's wonderful. Well, I think many of us feel like we sing with the choir all the time. We turn them on in the car, mm -hmm. we sing, yeah. we sing out. But to actually be among them had to be a daunting experience. Yeah, you guys actually missed out the term observation. Because uh, we remember we were asked to observe at least two rehearsals or remote outside of the U.S. To be honest, I think it wasn't that scary. Mm -hmm. But it gave us some good insights of how Mac actually worked with the choir in terms of warm-ups and the songs that they work on, whether it's for music and the spoken word or if it's for, for general conference. And another amazing thing uh, that I noticed that the leadership of the choir realized that we're coming from different locations. And so language may be a problem, adaptation may be a problem, even the weather may be a problem. And so they factor all of that in how they relate it to us. Uh, I, I remember the time we had results with Ryan he wasn't too hard on, on us. Oh, get going, you know, like what we're seeing, what they do with the choir school uh, students. You know, it's a little bit different from how they attended to us. You know, they want us to feel comfortable, want us to feel we, we can blend in. And so they gradually moved us from where we were to where they want us to be. When we arrived, we weren't set apart yet. But after we were set apart, it felt so different because we were like empowered by right. by God to do this um, mission that we are we were called in. And the first time, actually, the first Sunday that we went with the choir, I, I'm sure everyone shares the same opinion. Like we were kind of uh, surprised, or like we didn't know what to do. But like what they said, um, the choir members were really ready to help us. And I think also the spirit uh, during that rehearsal helped us and like all throughout the rehearsals that we experienced um, the spirit of the Lord was really there and actually last Tuesday <laughs> Dr. Wilberg said that it was one of the best rehearsals that they've had and to be part of that <laughs> was like wow we did a great job <laughs> and so we're, doing great. <laughs> yeah, we're doing great and we all celebrated that uh, feedback <laughs> <laughs> <You're so happy. laughs> well and i want to talk more with you about this spiritual side of it because we're all members of an international church and the choir has traveled the world representing the church and now you come to headquarters and help the choir actually represent the world what is it like to be be in the choir and represent your country and your fellow members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints here. Well, I'm really glad that you mentioned representation because that's how they feel. I keep receiving messages from people around Brazil saying how happy they are that we have not only one but three Brazilians singing at this time and they feel represented. I have even received messages from people from Peru. They don't have a, a representative right now, I mean, with the uh, international uh, singers. But this friend of mine wrote to me and said, we in Arequipa, Peru, are really happy and we feel represented that there are people from South America. So that, that was really inspiring. So I, I did a post on Facebook. I said that this is the highlight of my life. And one of my friends just replied, he, she said that this is the highlight of the Taiwanese people as well. Oh, yeah. That's great. I had this very sweet experience because we are going to sing This is a Christ in General Conference. And there's this line that says, With saints of old in joyful cry, I too can testify. This is a Christ. So it's been such a spiritual experience because when we're singing in the tabernacle, I feel the strength of the pioneers and how we are joining our voices from around the world with them in the same purpose. The people in the Philippines, they are very excited for the April General Conference. I have a family friend. It's 10 years already they stopped going to the conference center to watch the General Conference uh, broadcast. But when they found out that I'll be singing with the Tabernacle Choir, they are excited and they said that I think it's about time to watch the General Conference because I want to see your face on a bigger screen. So they're very excited. I also have friends who are not members of the church who are also excited to watch the April General Conference. So 
this program would really make a great yeah, right. impact. So a lot of people in West Africa are excited. I think the whole of Africa. But the excitement is also turning to something different. You know, some are beginning to argue, oh, he's a Nigerian. No, oh, he's a Ghanaian. No, oh, he's, he's a Ghanaian. No, we know him to be a Ghanaian. No, we know him to be a Nigerian. So they're all excited, at least somebody that you know, carries their flag. And, and usually they, when they, I used to have the two country flags on my name tag, and they'll go like, that's so exciting that you have both flags on. So wherever you choose, we are with you. We're excited. We <laughs> want to watch conference. <laughs> I had a very beautiful comment from a friend who's not a member of the church. So I post this thing I will be doing on Facebook. And she, she told me that even when she's not a member of the church, she was very happy for me and to have Mexico represented. So I think... It's like having a bigger impact that we thought it would be, like maybe only for members, but it, it is not. It has been a great thing also for non-members. Yes, I, I post a video on, on my Facebook and it's shared like 70 times with my friends. And some friends that are not a member of the church are asking me about how I become a member and why and they want to know why I'm a member of the church and why this is so important to me. So I feel so happy that I'm be able to share the gospel with them. And it's incredible because this is part of the things that we're going to do now, like a missionaries. So I'm so happy to share the gospel through music and through words because they are asking me about it. And you know, the question was, why are you a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and, and how did you become one? I think a lot of our fellow Latter-day Saints want to know how you got this opportunity to sing with the choir. What did you have to do? Now, this wasn't an easy process. It was a condensed process. Mm -hmm. You were recommended, but then you still had to go through the traditional audition and actually show that you met all the standards required for the choir including music theory and, and other skills. So the only thing that you lacked that every other member of the choir has is that you don't live within a certain distance of the conference center. So tell me what the audition process was like for you. It was scary. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoy every step. And when in the next step, I, I sometimes I think, if I'm not passed to the next phase, i just happy to be able to audition, to participate in the audition. Yeah, so, yeah. so I really enjoy the process because it's like a, a spiritual process too. Tell me what the process entailed. Okay, so we uh, the first one, I just emailed them to tell them what my you know past experience are according to the music, and I passed. The second one is I send the vocals. You sing to them as a recording, send it to them. And the last one is, um, you know, you do the Zoom meeting with... They asked for some exercises to like vocalization. And all the recordings yeah. without music, without yeah, yeah, any just pitch, yeah, just, yeah, just you just singing. Exactly, yeah, yeah. no yeah, piano yeah. at all. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So we had to turn in seven recordings with different exercises and yes. <laughs> singing in different ways so it was very uh, complete and the first phase we had some interviews and they wanted to know a little bit about us uh, some experiences that we had with music and some of the prerequisites were speak good english uh, know music uh, and be able to travel to the united states mm -hmm. I'm, I still remember the last one with uh, Dr. Murphy and another professor. Because of the time difference, it was uh, actually midnight in Taiwan. <laughs> so I was so scared to wake the neighbors up, you know? <laughs> but at the same time, they are, they are so loving and encouraging. So it, it was nice. Scary in the first place, but actually happy yeah. at the end. When you first turned on the camera, I was like, oh, oh. No. <laughs> that's Ryan Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> but but they were so nice. Him yes. and Sherilyn so Worthen, nice. they were really, so really nice. And they helped me through my audition. And it, it, it turned out to be a great experience, not a scary one. When I initially got an email that will have a live audition with <laughs> Ryan and Mark, I said, no, not those two guys. <laughs> I'm going to freak out, you know. <laughs> I, I was... In fact, I had to pray, say, please, I need that calmness to go through this because I don't know what to expect. But at the end, it turns out to be fine and so happy to be here. Interestingly, I had a bit of a challenge because 
Uh, it was around the time when I received those emails that when I returned back home from a wiser convention. And unfortunately, I caught COVID after that. And there was one instance I had to postpone the first audition to just another week or so. Even though I wasn't fully recovered, I felt that I needed to just go through it. But even though I wasn't back at my full self at that time, I was able to get through the next set of auditions and stuff. So in a way, it wasn't a pretty experience, but something to remember. And also the good thing about it is that I felt I needed to recently work with my former choir master, who I studied back at university. I felt those two lessons were doing the proper vocal training and all the techniques has helped me to prepare myself and get through the audition. That is remarkable, and we're so glad you're all here. I understand that you've also had a chance during your visit to Salt Lake to review some of the hymns that have been submitted for the upcoming hymn book that will be released by the church. What was that like? It felt like being part of history, you know? <laughs> the current hymn book we have was released way back 1985, correct? And so to hear the new hymn book is coming when it will be finally out. See, I see myself sitting in a sacrament meeting telling somebody, oh, I was part of that project. <laughs> it's really interesting how all the staff from the church music department and also other departments uh, in the church office building, they really want to listen to us. So they, they really ask us, how is it to be like a member of the church in our home countries? And that's amazing because they want to learn from us what we could do better as an institution and how people can improve their serving in the church. You've also had a chance during your visit to go to some historic sites in and around church headquarters uh, that you know we mentioned already. This sort of connects you to the early history in Salt Lake City, to the pioneers who cross the plains to establish Zion. And yet all of you are pioneers too. <laughs> what is it like to visit those sites and think about all that encompasses being at the headquarters of the church? So when we were touring the tabernacle and, and the organ, I had uh, what I would describe as the kaleidoscope of feeling. Too many things in my mind. Just imagining the sacrifices that they put in to build that magnificent organ. And to think that over these years it has remained that way, firm and still producing good music to all over the world. It's so enthralling. I also liked when we toured the tabernacle because they explained why it has like many entrances, many doors. So like it means that everyone can enter whichever way and like everyone is welcome. So it adds more like symbolism to the church being very inclusive and very welcoming to everyone, not just members, but also non-members. And when I found out that every music and spoken word, most of the audience are also non-members. So it's such a, it's a great, what do you call that? Um, a sign <laughs> or like it's it signifies that the church is really a church for everyone and the gospel is for everyone just like what jesus christ wants so among all the tours i think my favorite one is the uh, the one to the bishop storehouse and the humanitarian center um, because in taiwan people when they need help they just go to the bishop and they have agreement with the supermarket but here, like, they really have a lot of volunteers to do all the sorting and, you know, manufacturing the cans and stuff. So we really just, we saw that. And that I just amazed how church did, you know, this kind of loving thing in such an organized and profound way to people. So that really made me want to be a better and loving person. Yeah. So LDS Charities, I don't know, I find that was the most meaningful reason why our church is service oriented. We care for everyone over the world, especially who are sick, needy, who are going through life challenges, experiences, and so forth. Well, I think that's beautiful that in addition to being here, you can see how the church looks out at people through, right. through welfare initiatives mm -hmm. uh, like wheelchairs or clean water. 
I didn't have a chance to go with them when they visited those places because I arrived just last week. No, no, you were busy chasing someone. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I really like. Um, we had our meeting yesterday at, with uh, Ryan uh, before we sang hymn number the Come Come You Saints. What's hymn number, number is that? 30. Hymn number thirty. He narrate to us the the history of that music, and I was like very emotional because uh, when I was preparing uh, before coming here in Salt Lake City, I really struggled a lot for my visa. And then I, I remember the pioneer when they come here, the experience that they have experienced because I almost gave up is not even half of what I have experienced before I, I, I came here. So I was very emotional that time so because I remember the experience of the pioneer. I'm glad you mentioned that, Ronald. We had a, an opportunity to listen to, actually to watch Richard Elliott played the organ for us, like it was a private little concert for us. Yeah. And he played this beautiful arrangement of Come Come Ye Saints. And it was very touching. Mm -hmm. And uh, one part of the organ stays like across the room, like right in the back. And those pipes of the, the organ are still the original pipes from where when they built the organ back in 18, 18 something. And one part of the, his arrangement, it's just that particular part of the organ playing. And we really felt like it was the pioneers singing for us, Come, Come, Ye Saints. And it was a very spe special moment for all of us. Well, it's, it feels like you feel a connection to the past and to saints at headquarters. And you can feel the unity you feel with one another. What has it been like to get to know each other? Do you feel like you all have 10 new friends? Oh, yes. yes. oh definitely. Yes. 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 Yeah, yeah. Yes. we have, you know what, we have been talking about like spending Christmas yes. together. Visiting each other, going to this yes. country. Yes. Visiting each other, going to, you know, some weddings with that we hope so. Yes. <laughs> so you, you all planned and put us all yes. here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have friends especially that come, I mean, right, I'm talking about so called friends here right now. They come from three different areas that, just looking back at the history, I'm just impressed how the membership grew over the years. Honestly, from where I come from, we have a lot of work to do, then short. But I think, I guess the numbers don't really matter. To me, what matters most is our love for each other, our faith, and our going to support, help one another, and because we are basically in the same team working with the Tabernacle Choir, also working with possible music projects in future. And also, most importantly, as what I'm thinking of myself, reflecting on myself, taking the things that I've learned here, bringing them back to my home country. The best thing from this whole pilot program, because we're talking about get close to the world. Somehow, we are from different places. We look like different. We have backgrounds that completely different from each other, but we do have something in common. We all believe in Jesus Christ. And we actually, we all have a, a strong testimony about him. And as we are being here together, like for this two weeks, we can see everybody has a very strong love for the Savior. And what is actually, that makes me very emotional about, like we're not just gonna be singing together, as we are representing Brazil, Mexico, and all the countries, but we will be also with members from the choir sharing the same testimony that all over the world we know that Jesus Christ is our Savior. And this is the whole purpose of it. Like, I mean, we're assignment as missionaries, and we are doing that by and through music. But we do know that Jesus Christ is our Savior, and this is the best thing that we could do to share our love for music through music and testify about Jesus Christ. I'm just a little giddy about the fact that we call ourselves the first 10. <laughs> yeah, because there'll never be another first. I think that was Sister Stevens who told me. So yeah, I'm, I'm just very 
grateful to be part of this group and especially also the senior missionaries who are coming with us all the time. There are parents. We have a huge staff that is working with us. There are parents now here. I was going to mention that because yes, you have each other as new found friends, but you also have the 360 people that are in the choir that will count you as friends. And then every other person that you've had the opportunity to come in contact with. We're so glad that we had a chance to visit with you today because we all at the Church News consider you our friends now too. Um, We have a tradition at the Church News podcast. We like to end every episode with the same question and give everyone an opportunity to bear their testimony of the Savior Jesus Christ. And I'd like to have you do that in the order that you introduced yourselves. And then the question is, what do you know now? So what do you know now after having the opportunity to be set apart as a member of the Tabernacle Choir? And how is that a reflection of your testimony of the Savior Jesus Christ? I, I think that I need to do more. That I feel so blessed about my Heavenly Father. And I want to share all these things that I've learned here. All the things that I felt here with others, with my country. They are so happy that I'm here, that we are here. And I know that this is the Church of Jesus Christ. I know that He's my Savior. And I know with all my heart. And I'm so grateful because I mentioned it before that I always want to serve a mission. And I love music. So this is a great opportunity to me to do the both. And it's like a dream come true because I know that my Heavenly Father knows me. And He knows that I want this so much. I want to share the gospel with everyone. And I feel so grateful because i be able to do it through music in the Tabernacle Choir. Because we are ready to listen the words of a God through the prophets, through the... I know that we can help to prepare the hearts of everyone through music. As you can imagine, we have memorized a lot of songs, actually 11 of it. Before, I I am not a person who memorized lyrics a lot, but because we need to sing in the choir, so I need to really like study the lyrics. And actually, after, You know, when I get closer and get more familiar with the lyrics, I do feel like those are really like like kind of like a proclamation and testimony that we are going to share to the whole world. So when I, I, I'm truly grateful that this time I can really sing those testimony. I can, you know, be as a tool, as an instrument to sing those testimony and hope people listen to it can echo their heart to awaken their testimony about Jesus Christ. So I yeah, I remember last time, uh, actually just yesterday, when I sing with the choir, I do feel like, wow, this is really my testimony that Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ is doing their work and will help me you know, to fulfill my calling this time. If I didn't meet the missionaries 15 years ago, I don't know where I would be. I love the church so much. I'm grateful for the gospel of Jesus Christ in my life. I know that Joseph Smith was a true prophet of God. Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ, they live. I'm really grateful for His atoning sacrifice. And I'm grateful for the gift of music. We are so blessed because we have a living prophet today, President Russell M. Nelson. And... I know the church is true. The Book of Mormon is is true. It's another testament of Jesus Christ. What I usually pray for every day is to have at least one opportunity to serve every day. And through the years since I grew up in the church, I've always loved singing and I've always been a member of the church choir, a community choir, and now to be able to sing with the Tabernacle Choir, 
uh, is a huge milestone in my life. And I have discovered that one of the ways that I can serve best is to sing. And I'm very grateful for the talent that Heavenly Father has given me. And this is my way of sharing that talent and to be able to touch and inspire people through singing, especially uh, sacred music, is such a very fulfilling accomplishment in my life. And I'm very grateful for the church and for the gospel in my life also. And I feel very important even though I am just an ordinary person like I haven't <laughs> accomplished much in life yet but this is such a huge opportunity to just give back and to serve my brothers and sisters and to share my testimony through music so um, Charles Wesley years ago said if I had a thousand tongues I'll praise Christ with all of them. And I feel that same way. If I have even more than that, I will spend it all in, you know, singing praises to God because music, like food, satisfies me when I sing it. And everybody here knows I love food. <laughs> so it, 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 it's also like a food to my soul. Music heals me. You know, music comforts me. It uh, motivates me, it spurs me to do more, to love God and my neighbor as myself, and to stay on the covenant path, you know. Music reminds me of the covenants I've made with God to continue being on the right path. And so when I sing sacred hymns especially, I feel countless blessings, supernal blessings that guides me you know, helps me to stay true and gives me that confidence to stand boldly to say, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know that the church is true. I know that God lives. Those testimonies I have shared countless times through music. When I feel bereft of words to express myself, I just sing, I believe in Christ. And that song alone is is a huge, a very powerful testimony to anyone that listens to it, that all we do here, all we hear, traveling almost 18 hours from Accra, Ghana, to this place, is all about Jesus Christ. You know, every other thing is just uh, an appendage to the whole process, you know, but the center of it all is, is about Jesus Christ, and I feel closer to God when I sing praises to God. Oh, I recently got to know one of the Tabernacle Choir members. She told me that music is a universal language. And reflecting on this quote, I have to agree that regardless of the language that you're singing in, when you study music, you understand that the elements in terms of the techniques, in terms of the way how they play the music, is universal. It's like across many nations. Many people are familiar with whether they're musicians or not. They're able to hear it. They are familiar with the elements or the things that are present in music. And I just want to say that this has been a huge opportunity, a huge blessing to work with the members in the Tabernacle Choir. And I'm just grateful to especially sing praises to God and especially hope that as all of us prepare for this general conference that we will continue to touch the hearts of those who are not as fortunate, who are struggling with their lives and, and their faith as well. And also that they will be able to rekindle their faith in their testimonies. I was, um, when I discovered this pilot program and that everybody will come from their own countries to be together, I was very excited about because I knew that the gospel of the Lord will be just rushing on time to make all of the world know that Jesus Christ is the Savior. 
that is actually my thought and my feeling about this whole process. And with that, I've learned that I need to help more and just share the gospel through all the world because the Lord is coming. And we must do our part and actually be a witness of the love of our Savior Jesus Christ and testify that because of His atonement, we all can be together one day as families, as friends. That makes me very, very happy and also very humble because we are being part of this. And we need to come back to our countries and make a very speed. I don't know how to say that, but we need to hurry. You know, like the time is coming and we need to do something. We need to just share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we must do that yesterday. You know, like <laughs> that is my, my, my feelings about this. So I'm very happy and grateful for the Lord for this opportunity. I have felt a lot of love from day one. And it has been the most wonderful experience, like actually sharing many life things with many people, not only we 10, but with the members of the choir. To me, it has been like if I had connected with each one of them, like in their experiences, in their hearts and their testimonies. It's like I could feel Heavenly Father love for each one of them. So I've been pondering about singing with the Tabernacle Choir in this conference. And I've been thinking about all of the voices that had sung there before. And not only last year or 10 years ago, but lots of years ago, right? Many, many years ago. And I'm grateful in thinking that I am joining not my voice, but my testimony of the Jesus Christ and His Church with them. And I felt that power yesterday and Tuesday when I'm singing with them. I feel that we are praising the Lord and people need to hear it. People need to know that Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ love them and care about them. And people in our countries and people here and everywhere, they need and they must be closer to our Savior. And music is a very nice, you know, a beautiful, easy, perhaps, uh, instrument to do this. Because uh, sometimes it is hard to talk to people about the gospel, but it is easy to talk about music. And you can always invite them to, hey, you know what? or I'm doing this, or how, how don't you listen to this? It will make you feel peace in your life. So I know that Jesus Christ is our Lord, and I know He lives, and I know this is His church. And I believe this that we are doing right now is very important for the people back in our countries that, as Talita said, we need to do more. We need to to have great effort in everything we plan to do from now on, just to help the Lord with the gathering of Israel. I feel humbled and amazed about how many people help where they can to make this work go forth. We have hundreds and hundreds of people serving as singers, musicians, logistics in the choir and see that many volunteers doing that, what they can, what they know, just to help the work move, just to bring this kind of happiness and this spirit to every home of those who watch the broadcast or conference. It's just amazing how that works. We have a true prophet of God. President Nelson is inspired in Part of what we are seeing now has his finger because he received it from God. And as it was said previously, the work is speeding up. And this is part of this pace that we must uh, accompany. So I, I'm really glad to be part of it. And I know our Lord Jesus Christ lives and he is the head of this church. 
a thought that has been occurring to me is that the Tabernacle Choir doesn't need me or specifically each of us, but we needed this for our lives because this has strengthened my testimony so much. It has increased my will to serve and to be better and to help more in my city and in the church that I have never experienced this before. Even on my mission, this is different because we're being so well taken care of and we're so willing to learn and to help that it has been one of the most amazing experiences in my life. And the things that you ask is, what did we learn? I think I can say that I just learned better things that I knew, is that the church loves all people throughout the world. And this is Jesus Christ's church. I am 100% sure, sure of that. And wherever we go or wherever we come from, it's the same church. And he loves us and he is happy with our work. I am sure of that. You have been listening to the Church News Podcast. I'm your host, Church News Editor, Sarah Jane Weaver. I hope you have learned something today about the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints by peering with me through the Church News window. Please remember to subscribe to this podcast. And if you enjoyed the messages we shared today, please make sure you share the podcast with others. Thanks to our guests, to my producer, Kellyanne Halverson, and others who make this podcast possible. Join us every week for a new episode. Find us on your favorite podcasting channel or with other news and updates about the church on thechurchnews.com.